Lots of websites promise easy ways to get your family history done, but how do you start the right way? Hello, Pennsylvania friends. My name is Denise Allen, and I am a genealogy researcher and history enthusiast here in Pennsylvania. I consider it my job in life to help people discover their ancestors in Pennsylvania. I'm thrilled that you're here. This week's episode is going to be about getting started in Pennsylvania genealogy. You see, I realized that I had done 65 episodes about Pennsylvania genealogy and never talked about how to actually start. What's the step number one you should do if you find out you have an ancestor in Pennsylvania? I'm going to cover it now in this episode with three things uh, that you can do to make sure that you've started your genealogy the right way, the best way, and it might make it easier for you too. The first thing you want to do when you're researching your family history, and this isn't just a Pennsylvania thing, this is really anywhere, is you really want to collect as much information from your living family members as possible. So really connect and collect from your family. Maybe you can think of this as reuse and recycle, <laughs> upcycling, but really our Living family members now, whether they're aunts or cousins, second cousins, grandparents, great grandparents, have these little tidbits of information that for you, when you're researching through records, will really, really help. How does this random story that my grandmother keeps repeating mean anything? And you'll find if you write down those stories and just take note of them, that there's details in there about places, events times of, of like major historical times that happen and how your family interacted in those events is in those details. And you'll be able to use things like newspapers, military records, vital records, court cases to really uncover more of the details of your family history. So go ahead, connect with your family members. Easy way I found to do it because of the amount of information I can get at times, and I have some family <laughs> that talks really, really fast, is I've used apps on my phone to record the information. One that a lot of people love is an app called Otter AI. Otter, like the animal, Otter. It actually will transcribe into typewritten text what the person said. Now, the transcription's never 100% perfect, especially for names. You'll have to go through and change those, but at least it gets you 90 or 95% of the way there. And then you have both an audio recording of your family member as well as a written text of what they said. So you have it saved two ways. I highly recommend using an app or you can just take handwritten notes because you want this information to be maintained in your record so you can access it later for those facts like names, dates, and places uh, to help in your research. Now, some of you might be thinking right now, wait a second, you started with talking to people <laughs> and I want to know about cool ways to start family history. So what about all these DNA tests? DNA tests are cool. They're easy. The commercials tell me I can just instantly find out I'm related to George Washington. Why wouldn't I take these tests? And actually, I do have a whole episode I'm recording on which of these DNA tests you might want to take. If you're interested in Pennsylvania ancestry and connecting to your Pennsylvania ancestors and making that easier for you, there are cool ways in the DNA test to do it. But as a family historian, a genealogist, a historian, an enthusiast of all things Pennsylvania, knowing what gets missed in our family history, the talking to people, the living people is the most important thing you can do first in, in terms of assembling your family history. The second thing you're going to do as you're getting started in Pennsylvania research is use some of these websites that will help you. The two main websites that people use these days are Ancestry and Family Search. The main difference between the two is Ancestry charges a fee per month for their services and Family Search is free. They also have differences in records available on their websites, and I'll be covering those in upcoming episodes as we talk about vital records. We'll start with those first. But in terms of the family tree information and making some of those first connections that I'm going to talk about right now, 
either site will do. In this second step, you're going to go to either Ancestry or Family Search and put in yourself, your parents, and your grandparents. So you're going to have seven individuals in there. You can put in your siblings if you choose and your parents' siblings, but you want to start with those first people and start to find particularly your grandparents in the census. So if your parents are old enough that they were in that 1950 census, go ahead and find them in the 1950 census. A lot of it's been indexed. The names are starting to really appear in the searches. So have some fun with that. You can find out where they were as a child, a teenager, a young adult in that census, and it's a great time. You're definitely going to be able to find your grandparents in there if they were alive at the time of the 1950 census. And then you can start going back to the 1940s, the 30s, the 20s. And that is really rewarding as you get started with your family history is to find them handwritten on those documents and then add that to your family tree. What you're going to do uh, next as you're doing this census search is to start looking then for the vital records for people in your family that are old enough uh, to be on the Pennsylvania Vital Records free publicly accessible records. So for right now in 2022, that would be people that died before 1971 their death certificates are publicly available and they're available free to Pennsylvania residents. The link is in the show notes for how to access those. And for birth certificates, the ones that are publicly available and free are the births before 1911. Check the link in the show notes for those. And if you need uh, vital records, birth certificates and death certificates for more recent dates, those are available through the Pennsylvania Department of Health. And I included the link in the show notes there. I'm going to go really in depth with these vital records and all the ins and outs of how to get them, the different varieties there are, because there are more than just one kind of birth and death record in modern history in Pennsylvania. And I know you can't wait to figure out what those are. Start with that basic outline for your family tree with the censuses and those basic vital records and see what you discover. The third part of starting off your family history the right way, <laughs> and I use that term right very lightly. This is my preferred way to do it and a way that I wish I had started it in some sense and I backtracked and started it. But this third way is probably the most controversial to do at this very beginning point. You ready? And it's to share your family history as you go. Now, a lot of you listening to this are thinking, no, I want to share my family history once it's done. I want to finish it all, make it complete, and then I will share it. And if you talk to any genealogist, any family historian, any person interested in family history, they're going to tell you it's never done. <laughs> There's always another record. There's always an ancestor that's a real sticking point. There's ancestors we get a little bit of a, obsessed over because of the events in their life. So what makes sharing your family history right to do from the beginning is you're going to get involvement looping back up to number one. So the first point I said about collecting information from your living relatives. If you start sharing your family history right away, saying, hey, I'm starting to research our family history. Here's what I found so far. And I recommend having your own blog. It's really easy to start with WordPress. WordPress powers something like half or 75% of the inter internet. Just start with a free blog, an easy template. Don't make it hard on yourself. And just share what you, what you find and then send it to your family members that you just talked to in step one, they're going to read what you wrote and say, oh, you know what? I just realized that da, 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 da. And they'll start filling in more details for you. It'll trigger more memories for them. And you're going to get more names and dates and places to help in your family history research. So you're going to hit that record button again on your phone. You're going to be taking those notes and really capturing your family history. It's a real win-win situation when you share it because you get to experience the joy of the discovery. You share it, 
other people get to experience the joy of the discovery. And then they cycle back to you with more information of discoveries and connections. And then it keeps going. It's a great way to build momentum and enthusiasm around your family history as you go. As you research your Pennsylvania ancestors and your ancestors in other states, make sure to connect to the local genealogical and historical societies in those states. And if you're in Pennsylvania, I'd love for you to sign up for my newsletter. Each week I provide a little bit of history, some genealogical records, and links to this podcast so you can stay up to date with what's going on with Pennsylvania records at any time in history. I'd be thrilled to have you join also as a member. You can check that out on my website under paancestors.com backslash members. This is Denise Allen wishing you many discoveries about your Pennsylvania ancestors. Thank you.